Well, good morning, Central Hatchie. I hope and pray that everybody's doing well this Sunday morning. Uh, I certainly have uh, been excited, looking forward to being with you this morning. Uh, just, uh, I just want to tell you, first of all, uh, church, I, I love you and I thank God for you. For those of you who are tuning in or not part of the church, I love you too. And I'm glad that you're here with us this morning. I'm glad you're taking time to watch this video. There's a couple things that I want to address and want to share with you this morning. Uh, first off, uh, there's been many that have called and asked. The governor started opening things up, and, and uh, some of them wanted to know about church. Well, uh, I uh, got together, and with uh, Renee's help, I have been able to call uh, uh, many of you, and for the most part, didn't find anybody that felt like it was time to start back just yet. So uh, I called the deacons, and the deacons and I have talked, and what we are doing right now is... Uh, we're just going to continue doing what we're doing. Uh, uh, we'll let you know uh, as uh, uh, we feel led to, to move and come back together. But right now, we just feel like we just want to err on the side of caution to keep everybody safe. Uh, we would just absolutely be heartbroken if we were to get together and, and, and somebody was to get sick from it. So uh, just let you know what's going on with that. We'll certainly keep you informed as we go. Uh, first, I, I want you to be uh, praying, though, and asking God uh, uh, to lead us and guide us and to give us discernment on how we're uh, supposed to move forward from here. Um, I'm going to bring, bring, be bringing you a message this morning, and the title of my message this morning, it will be Finding God for Myself. We started this last Sunday morning at 9-11, uh, uh, and so uh, we're going to take up from where we was at last week and move forward uh, from there, but it's finding God for myself. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. And remember, uh, as I told you last week, if you don't have your Bible there with you, I wish you would get it and, and join me here in the uh, uh, video with it as we uh, look, at it, uh, look at the video uh, as you, so you could follow along. I uh, wanted to also uh, let you know that this morning there's some streaming changes. Uh, first of all, uh, you'll be able to, I know many of you are watching live Facebook, but you will be able to go on our website. And going on our website, you'll be able to uh, live stream from there. And there's a button, you'll see it, you can click on it. Uh, if, you, uh, if you do that, I also want you to know if you're on Facebook, uh, I'd like for everybody to share their, their, their videos with their, uh, with their contacts. Go down to the bottom of the page, there's a share button, click on that and just follow the prompts on that, share it with your uh, uh, people, help us get the gospel out. It's important for us to reach people with the gospel. Those of you who do not have Facebook and you are watching on our website, I wish you'd go out and you would share our website with uh, other people, your friends, your family uh, that don't normally come to church with us, share it with them, invite them to watch, have a host a watch party, do whatever, help us get the gospel out during this time. One of the things that you'll notice on the website, if you go there, is that there is a, uh, a place over on the right that you'll be able to uh, uh, pull up the Bible and follow along on the Bible right there on, your, on the screen with you. Uh, also, there's a place up at the top, if you look in the uh, uh, top header, uh, you'll find that there's information about us as a church on what we believe, how we believe it, all that stuff. You'll be able to find information about some different ministries we have. And you'll also find there's a button on there for online giving. Yes, Brother Mark's talking about giving again. It's important for us to be obedient during this time and uh, continue the work of the Lord here at the church. We're still continuing the same ministries that we had before, ministering to people, and we still have bills rolls around. So please be continue to be faithful in your giving. If you don't give online, continue. You can send it to uh, uh, Brother Ely Lofton at 35 Lofton Lane, Franklin, Georgia. Uh, but just be obedient in that. Well, as a way of getting started, I hope you've had some time to turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 14, uh, verse number 12. We're going to read, and then I'm going to ask Brother Scott Bailey, who happens to be here with us this morning, to pray. Uh, so if you will, uh, 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 let's read Proverbs chapter number 14. Uh, we're going to read verse number 12. Here's what the Word of God says. There is a way 
which seemeth. Now, now, once you know that word seemeth is big, it's, it means it, it's, it, 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 it looks to you like there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Now, don't you get that? It seems right, but it, it's a way of death. Now, I want to share with you from a different version, the, uh, uh, the Christian uh, uh, English version, the content, I'm sorry, contemporary English version, Here's what Proverbs 14, 12 said. You may think you are on the right road and still end up dead. Did you get that? Listen to that. You may think you're on the right road and still end up dead. Oh, what a tragedy that would be. Brother Scott, cherish the Lord, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day and the blessings of life to bless us with. And I pray as we gather here in your name, Father Lord, all over uh, the internet, wherever this thing's going out, Lord, I pray that you bless it, that you that you be close to Brother Mark as he preaches the yes, Word of God, God this morning, Lord, that you help him along with the Holy Ghost, Lord. And I thank you this morning, Lord, that the, the gospel, Lord, doesn't go hindered, Father, Lord, that it goes out and it does its job. And I pray today, if there's one listening that doesn't know the a free pardon of sin and what Jesus can do for them, I pray today it will be that day that they come to know uh, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, meet with us as we meet in your name today. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen and amen. I want to start today, uh, as I said, bringing you the message of finding God for myself. I believe one of the most important things for any individual is to be able to find God, to, able to know him on a personal level. So with that being said, I want you to hear this. I heard a story, and it ain't just a story, it's a true story. Uh, it, it, it starts on August the 7th of 1961. A 26-year-old Rus Russian cosmonaut became the second Soviet to rocket into space. He orbited the Earth and returned safely. After he returned, he sarcastically let it be known he had looked for God while he was up there in space, but he had not found him. And therefore, he concluded that God did not exist. Friends, I want you to know because you haven't physically seen God doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Let me give you an example. I want you to understand I have never seen the wind. However, I have felt the effects of the wind. I haven't physically seen God, but I have seen the effects of God. I shared with uh, uh, Brother Scott and Brother Chuck earlier this morning that yesterday I was nailing tin down on top of a building. And if any of you went outside yesterday, you know how windy it was. Friends, I want you to know something. I didn't see the wind, but what I did is I felt the effects. The way that I did, I was, I was, I was actually, I wasn't nailing down to I was screwing it down, and I had put my old left foot on it, and, and I, I, I was beginning to put the screw in the left side of the tin, and the wind blew that piece of tin up and knocked me right in the head on the right-hand side. Friends, I didn't see that wind, but I certainly felt the effects of it. Just because the Russian cosmonaut did not see God does not mean that God dis didn't exist. You see, in that kind of thinking, come, is, it, it comes uh, to the place where it's contrary to what the majority of the population of the world thinks. I don't know if you know this or not, but I want to throw some statistics out there for you. In, in 2016, just a, just a, 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 five, a four or five years ago, 73.6% uh, of Americans identified themselves as Christians. This included the Catholics, this included the Mormons, the Protestants, and all who call themselves Christians. 60, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 73.6%. In 1990, that number was 85%. So we see a downward slope. But still, that's a vast majority of people believe that there is a God and they identify themselves as Christians. There are some who place that number even higher than that. They believe that there were more than, 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 than that many, friends. But however, among them, there are many different views. There are many different views as to, uh, as to what they believe. For some... They believe that God is holy. They believe that God is just. They believe that God is perfect in every way 
day and that he created the world and he rules over it every day. That's how some of them believe. But there is also another view and it's an agnostic view of God and the agnostic doesn't necessarily reject God but he rejects the possibility of knowing God. He doesn't believe you You can know God on an intimate level. He, he doesn't say, I don't know if there's a God. Instead, he says, I cannot know if there's a God. So he doesn't really know if there's a God or not. He believes there's something up there. You see, he, he rules out knowing God on a personal level. Now, I want you to catch this. Christianity has 2.3 billion followers around the world. And, 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 and they're followers of God, but not all are followers of Christ. You see, to know God is truly amazing. And to have an intimate relationship with him is invaluable. With all this said, it caused me to ask a few questions. Now, if there's that many Christians around the world, I don't know about you, but I got a, I, I just got a different way of looking at things and, and, and some things that I thought about. Let me tell you what. If people know him in the church, if there's that many people who claim to be Christian, I started to ask myself, then why are there so many people that are self-medicating because of depression in this world when we have someone we can cast all of our cares upon? Why is it so many people are find, looking for an escape at the bottom of a bottle? Why are so many people trying to uh, 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 be in a, in a drug-filled stupor uh, trying to escape the reality of the day that they're living in? I don't understand it. There's that many Christians and we're uh, they're 70 something percent of that. Why is it so prevalent in this time? Why are there so many orphans in this world? Why are there so many kids that, that have no home? Why are there so many in foster care? Why are there so many that, that that's nowhere uh, to, to live? Nowhere to, uh, no one to call daddy and nobody to call mama. Why are there so many that way if there's truly that many Christians? Why is it this way? Let me ask you this. Why is the divorce rate as high as it is if there's that many Christians, that many followers of Christ, that many followers of the way? Why in the world is it that there's so many single parents out there today when Jesus said there was no excuse for divorce except for what? Adultery. Why are there so many teenage pregnancies? Did you know in 2018, right here in the state of Georgia, there were 7,385 teenage births? Now, I'm not talking about just pregnancies. I'm talking about births in Georgia. I wonder about that. You see, if, 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 if everybody who claimed to know Christ, and there was that many people that, that, that were followers that are true Christians, and, and Christians are, are supposed to be people of the way, people who follow the teachings of this book, if we follow the teachings of that book, why, are we, the, why is there so much thing, so many things that is contrary to this word? I don't understand that. I don't know. You may, have, you may fully understand it. I don't understand it. Amen? But listen to this. It's time for each one of us to do a self-examination. If, if, you, if you believe what I've just shared with you at all, it's time for us to do a self-examination. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 in the contemporary English version says this. It says, that is why you must examine the way you eat and drink. If you fail to understand that you are the body of the Lord, you will condemn yourselves by the way you eat and drink. That's why many of you are sick and weak and why a lot of others have died. If we carefully judge ourselves, we won't be punished. But when the Lord judges and punishes us, he does it to keep us from being condemned with the rest of the world. I read every bit of that, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, just simply to say this. It's time for us as Christians with everything that's going on around us and, and sin running as rampant as it does among believers, it's time for us to examine ourselves and find out whether or not we truly believe the way that we say that we do. If there's 70 some odd percent of people that claim to know Christ, then there are 70 some odd people, uh, percent of the people ought to be living like they know Christ. Amen? You know, when we do a self-examination, you know what most people do? Most people say, well, I just do the best I can. Most people say, well, I'm, in, I'm as good as I can be. And 
thank God for grace. Now, I say that myself. Thank God for grace. Amen. I wear grace out. I know I do. But would you journey with me to truly seek a true relationship with God? What do you mean by that, Brother Mark? I, what I mean by that is, is, is to find ourselves hungry and thirsty after righteousness. Would you journey with me to, to see, I believe this. I believe that without a doubt God has revealed in my heart that, that if the people of God would act like people of God, then this world would change. I believe it with all my heart. So, so journey with, if you would journey with me and to truly seek God, would, for many, their God is simply the church. To come to the house of God. You know, I had somebody tell me the other day, he said, well, I, I don't feel like I have. I, I, I've, been, I've been with God in, 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 in several weeks now. i got news for you. If coming to the house of God is what is your God, then you've got the wrong God. Because all it is is a, is a physical being. I got news for you. The same brick and mortar that built in the wood that built this could have built a bar. They could have built a, 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 a house of ill repute. You could have built anything that you wanted to out of the same brick. And I guarantee you the man that sold the stuff didn't give a flip what it was built. Listen, you and I got to realize that a relationship with God is more than the church. Would you be willing to, to, to say uh, to God, I want to know you more? That is the first thing, and I'd like to ask you today. Would you be willing to say to God, I want to know you more? And I believe it's the answer that you'd say this morning would be absolutely. Well, Lee Strobel uh, uh, was an atheist, and, and he had a good job. Uh, he was the legal affairs editor of the Chicago Tribune, and he was financially secure, and he saw little need for God. Do you know that there's a lot of people that sits on the pew of the church, uh, a lot of people who claim to be Christian that, that really sees very little need for God? You say, how do you know that? Because they're not searching the scriptures like it was precious silver and gold. They're not, they're not digging into the word. They're not, they're not searching for him. Listen to this. He thought, in fact, that the very idea of God was ridiculous and wasn't even worth investigating. He felt there was no reason to search out for God. And then, something happened, though. Lee's wife became a Christian. And when she became a Christian, she, 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 she went to a church that presented the gospel in a way that made sense. And at the encouragement of his wife, Lee started going to church. And when he started going to church, uh, he, he didn't want anybody to, 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 to think that he, who was a self-professed atheist, they didn't, he didn't want anybody to think that he was there searching for God. So he brought his reporter's tablet with him, and he would sit there, and he started taking notes where they would think that he was just merely writing a story on Christianity or something, trying to hide among the people, if you will. But what he did, you see, after his first visit, something happened. The first visit led to a second, which led to a third, which led to a fourth, and so on and so on. And he began to look at the evidence that was being presented unto him. Let me ask you this, church. Have you ever stopped and just examined the evidence of Christ? Have you ever stopped? You say, well, Brother Mark, what do you mean? I, I go to church every Sunday. Yeah, but have you ever just stopped and examined what it is that you have presented to you on a regular basis? See, Lee started to, he, he started to look at the historical evidence of Christ. He started looking at the circumstantial evidence of Christ. He started looking at the biblical evidence of Christ. And he started looking at the ancient writings. And when it is, he explored, he, he explored not only Christianity, but he started then to explore the world's religion. The man got curious, if you will. Boy, it'd be good if people would become curious as to the word of God. Listen to this. He listened to the philosophical decision, discussions about Christianity. And, 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 and here is what, after two and a half years that Lee Strobel come up with, here's what he said. Uh, and this was a, a startling conclusion for a self-professed atheist. Listen to this. It would take more faith not to believe in God than to believe in God. How about that? Lee Strobel said it would take more faith not to believe in God after examining all 
of the evidence, historical, circumstantial, biblical, and ancient writing that it would for him to believe in God. So with that, he, he, after two and a half years, he gave his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I think most of us would agree that, 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 that there is someone out there. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that there's somebody out there? Most people say, well, I know there's a creator out there. And by the way, many of those that do that are identifying themselves as Christianity because they say, I know that there's somebody out there, but they don't really know who that somebody is. I'm going to ask you a question. Will you journey with me and get to know him? Would you journey with me and get to know him more intimately? Would you go with me on a journey to find him if it's at all possible? If he can be found, you say, sure, Brother Mark, how? I'm going to tell you how. Are you ready? If you were taking notes, try to write this down. First thing is have an open mind. You know, as a, uh, most of us believe something. Most of us has already believed something. We've settled on what we believe. Uh, uh, but let me ask you this. Uh, to have an open mind about what you believe just for a minute. Let me ask you a question. What is it that you really believe? You know, some people say, well, I believe this or I believe that. Folks, let me tell you something. I can tell you uh, people that uh, uh, believe if you don't wear a white shirt and a black suit and uh, a, 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 a tie on Sunday morning that, 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 that you're just the scum of the earth and you ain't fit to be in the house of God. I can tell you and show you other people that, that believe it, that, that, uh, that your salvation is by works. I can tell you and show you the other people that tells you you're either born to uh, go to heaven or you're born to go to hell, that you ain't got much choice in the matter. I can tell you and show you other people, my friends, who, who believe in and, and all exclusivism and believe anybody can just be in uh, uh, it doesn't matter you ain't got to do nothing in order to be saved uh, uh, there's all sorts of beliefs out there so I want to ask you this question today will you examine your heart and ask yourself be open and honest what is it that you believe now then when you ask yourself what it is you believe and you come to terms with what you believe I want to ask you another question where did it come from you see, many of you believe what you believe because of where you believe that. Stay with me. Many of you believe it because you was uh, uh, born in a certain location. That is, for instance, if you'd have been born overseas, uh, uh, maybe in one of the uh, 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 Iran, Iraq, or somewhere, maybe over there, you would have you would be Islamic. Or maybe you was born in a Muslim country and you're a Muslim and uh, maybe you was born uh, 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 in Mexico and you're Catholic. Maybe you were born uh, uh, wherever and, and, and Bible, Bible, you're born in the old Bible Belt. Boy, you're, you're a Bible-believing Christian because you were born in the Bible Belt. So I'm asking you this question this morning. Be open and honest. Open your heart. Just take a minute and say, God, speak to me and, and, and reveal to me. Where did I get what I've come to believe from. You see, and not, and not only that, maybe maybe you believe in this simply because your parents instilled it into you. In other words, you you just always, uh, my mom and daddy said, this is what we believe and this is what I believe. No, that's what mom and daddy said I believe. Friends, I got news for you. It is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that you have to have. It is not what mom and daddy believe. You've got to come to terms with what you believe. You've got to accept what you believe. You've got to figure out what you believe on your own. The Bible says that every man ought to work out his own salvation. So with that being said, I want you to know this. Uh, many of you also, they, 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 they believe what they do because of where they live. They believe what they do because of their parents, and they believe what they do just because they... Let me share this with you. I was in Africa a couple of a few years back, and there's this guy, this Muslim guy, got a step through the bushes, and he has this machete in his hand, and he's a popping that thing just like left and right. He's mad, and he's a blah, 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 blah. I don't understand a word he's saying, but but you know what? This guy, come to find out, he was so mixed up. He had a little bit of the Church of uh, Uganda. He had a little bit of Catholicism. He had a little bit of, a, uh, uh, of the Church of God. He had a little bit of, a, uh, of, a, of the Muslim faith. And, and he had everything all twisted up. 
You know, as many people in the church today that had never opened the precious word of God and never read one word from this old book except for what maybe showed up on the screen or just what the preacher uh, said, read this verse, that's all they've ever read. And you know what? Uh, they have just heard some things and they started to believe just what they heard rather than uh, 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 searching the scriptures for themselves. Friends, I got news for you. If you're going to seek God and you're going to find God, you gotta, you got you to gotta open his word to find him. You say, well, Brother Mark, you mean you know, i got to open his word to be saved? No, uh-uh. You can hear and you can be saved, but if you're truly going to come to know God, you got to get to know him where he lives, and he lives right here in this old book because this old book's alive. Isn't it time that we find out truth for ourselves? Isn't it time that, that, that we ask God to reveal to us what is true? Well, I, I certainly want to. You see, the historical evidence is clear. I want you to just back up. If we're going to search for God, I want to stop and think just a minute. Some people say, well, I don't know, Brother Mark. That old agnostic says, well, I don't believe I can know God. Well, let me ask you this. If we stop to look at the historical evidence for God and we start to look at the historical evidence of, of knowing him, then there is one thing that is clear. Nothing has ever impacted this world like Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. If we were to go back, and all of you know this, if you'll, if you'll go back and you'll see that, that our historical times was divided in B.C. and A.D., B.C. was before Christ, of course, and a lot of people say in A.D. was after death. No, that's not it. It's, it, it's the year of our Lord. It is a nano demomini, or however you say it. Uh, but anyway, it's the year of our Lord, the years after Christ. You see, when Christ came and lived on this earth, it divided history. Our history is divided by people say, well, I don't know if he really existed or not. Well, let me tell you something. It wasn't a divided time if he hadn't been here. Amen? Friends, I want you to know, not only did, the, did, the, did everybody believe back then. So let's begin uh, this morning. I said, if you want to truly search for him, I beg you, I implore you, I ask you with everything, I beseech you, as Scripture said, I want you to begin by having an open mind. You know what that means? That means you've got to put aside some of your preconceived notions of what you have already thought, and you've got to say, God, I need the truth. So first, let's examine the documents that say if Christ was, was so impactful that that, that that time was split because of him, then let's start to examine the documents, if we're going to find him, that reveal him most, the ones that focus on him. Yeah, I'm talking about the Bible. Let's start to examine the Bible. There's 66 books, 40 authors wrote over some 400 years. Uh, yes, they, uh, they're there, and they wind up, and, uh, and, 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 and the very climax of it all is called the book of Revelation. You'll see when Jesus said, I mean, the Bible says that God was Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Well, he wrote about the end in this book, and it's the Revelation, which is simply the drawing back of the curtain. You see, the, the word revelation, is, uh, the word of God is simply the drawing back of the curtain, the opening the curtain up to reveal Jesus Christ to us. So if we want to really know God, we got to look into the word that, 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 that focuses most on him. And the Bible is what focuses more on Christ than any other document. We've already established that he exists in history, so this focuses on him. Okay? We call it the word of God. Now, I want you to see this. If you were to turn and you were to look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13 from the contemporary uh, uh, English version, here's what it says. What God has said isn't only alive and active. It is, listen to this, it is sharper than any double-edged sword. His words cut through our spirits and souls, through our joints and marrow, until it discovers the desires and the thoughts of our hearts Nothing is hidden from God. He sees through everything, and we will have to tell him the truth. I don't know about you, but that sounds a, a, sounds a whole lot like it's got a, a lot of power. I, I want you to see this. I want you to hear this. I want you to believe this. Listen to me. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. Listen to it again. And from the New Living Translation, it says this. It says, for the word of God is full of living power. Not just power, but living power. It's an ongoing power. Uh, it is sharper than the sharpest knife. It cutteth into the innermost thought, our, our innermost thoughts and desires. It is 
exposes who we really are. Ain't that something? And nothing at all in all of creation can hide him from him. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. This is the God to whom we must explain all we have done. Friends, let me listen to this. If you want a true relationship, if you want to find God, you've got to have an open mind. You've got to be open to the truth. Then you have to determine what it is you're looking for. If we're going to look and see that, that yes, uh, uh, it's evident that he was back there uh, uh, because our, 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 our history is divided because of it. If we, if, if, if we, if we can establish and for a moment it, uh, just uh, entertain the idea that he really existed in the form of the flesh and he came as the son of God, if we'll entertain that just for a second, if we'll have an open up nine, then, then we have to determine if we're going to search for God, we have to determine what it is we're looking for. If you want a relationship with him, what do you want to? Let me share this with you. Many people today, when they're asked what they're looking for in God, you know what they want? They want a God that's going to solve all of their problems. It makes all of their troubles and trials go away. It means that, that, that when, the, when the impossible comes before us, uh, that, that, that it's without a doubt that, that he'll just take care of that impossible. Yes, our God is a miracle-working God. But, my friends, just because you come to know him does not mean that you're not going to have trouble. By the way, the scripture says that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be uh, compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. I believe this. When we accept Christ as our Savior, when we start to search for him, we know that suffering is going to come our way. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have trials. We're going to have problems. And friends, I want you to know that you've got to determine what you're looking for. If you're looking for a God that's going to take away all of your troubles, you're looking at the wrong place because i got news for you. It ain't going to happen. You see... God instead tells us that what he wants to do is not take your troubles away, but he wants to see you through them. Not only does he want to see you through them, but he'll see you through them by that intimate change that he makes within you that helps you deal. Stay with me. God wants to change you. I don't want to change. I like me just like I am. You may do it. But as long as you got that attitude, you'll never come to know him. You'll never know him in the free pardon of sin as long as you got that attitude. You see, that's why I said you got to open your mind up. You got to determine what you're look for, looking for. You got to come to terms with who Christ is and what he's willing to do. You see, what he's willing to do more than anything else is to change your character. Is to create a new person within you. He's willing to take and mold you and make you into a new individual. You see, you say you want to find God, but many of you only want God to complement your lifestyle. You ultimately find that all God's interested in is not to complement your lifestyle, but it's to change your life. He doesn't promise to solve the problems, but what he promises is to walk with you every step of the way of life. Nothing in creation can be hid from him. it's important for us to look for. So I'm inviting you today to join me in a journey. And over the next few weeks, we're going we're gonna, to, with an open heart, open mind, having determined what we're looking for, we're going to search for him, the true God.
not some God that we have made up, but the true God. And the way we're going to do that is by digging in the scripture. So first of all, I want to ask you this. Let me show this for you. Matthew 22, before I do, Matthew 22, verse 29 through 31. Here's what the Word of God says. As Jesus was speaking to those who were seeking, they were asking him questions. And here's what he said to them. You're completely wrong. You don't know what the scriptures teach. And you don't know anything about the power of God. I read that to you to say this. That's in Matthew chapter 22, verse 29, 29 and 30. I read this to say this. You and I, if we're going to know the true God, we've got to go look at him and look for him in scripture. It's his word. It's the way he reveals himself. If you want to truly know him, and I'm, I'm asking you to go with me on a journey to find him. But I'm going to ask you to go to the journey. And the first step is that we embark in the gospel. If we're going to find Christ, we got to find him first in the gospel. So I'm going to ask you, if you will, to let's go to the gospel of John. And over the next week, I'm going to invite you. I'm going to invite you. I'm going to urge you. I'm going to beg you, if you will, to please read the Gospel of John. I believe that God, John will give you an overview of the Word of God. And you can start to find out how he works and what God's trying to do through his son, Jesus Christ, in the book of John. You see, if, 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 if all of this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, then we need to look at where he's revealed first, and that's in the Gospel. Friends, not only that, if you're seeking God, you really want to know him. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. If you really want to know God, he can be found. He can be found in these books, this precious book. All 66 books reveal him. One way or another. And friends, I want you to know something. Your invitation today is to know him. Not just know about him. But to know him. Maybe you're there today and you know what? You're already ready to accept him as your Savior. You're already ready to ask him to come into your heart save your soul. God's already initiated a relationship with you when he took on the form of flesh and went to the cross and died for you. He wants you to know him. He did it as I preached at 9-11 this morning, our 9-11 service, that you could be reconciled to him. But Mark, I'm ready. I want to know him that way. And I have to ask you a question. Do you believe in the finished work of the cross? The fact that Jesus went to the cross and he died there for your sins? Do you believe that he paid the price? That's what scripture says. Scripture says that, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And he paid that price. He paid the wage for your sin. And he offers it to you freely. And right where you are, right where you are, would you just simply bow your head and pray with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you went to the cross for me. And as best as I know how, I receive you as my Savior. As best as I know how, I believe and I trust and I accept what you did. Lord, I love you. Just thank you for coming into my life. Now save my soul. Forgive my sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask you a question. Would you pray that with me for the very first time? Asking Christ to come into your heart. If you did, I want to ask you a question. Are you ashamed of it? 
Are you ashamed of what he did? Are you ashamed of what he's doing? If you're not ashamed, then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to tell somebody, if not me, tell somebody today that you've accepted Christ as your Savior. And I want you to, not only that, if you want to talk to me, message me on Messenger. If you want to, if you want to send me a, a something on the email, all you got to do is go to our website, click on the prayer that goes straight to my office, and I can answer any questions there. It'll just be between me and you. If you wanna, if you wanna call me, my telephone number is 770-862-1168. I wanna, re, I wanna, I wanna rejoice with you in your newfound faith as we begin this journey of seeking Christ. You say, Brother Mark, I've been saved forever. How do I, how do I know if I need Christ? Well, let me ask you this: Are you falling part of that bunch that does not truly know Him? just want to know him more, then let me tell you this, the most important thing we can do on any given day when we rise from our bed is to seek God. And friends, over the next few weeks, we're going to be seeking him. Please, if you will, commit. Just go ahead and send me a text saying, I will. I will commit to the book of John this upcoming week. Thank you. Hope y'all have a great day. I love you, and uh, we'll See you next week.